All right, well, I want to welcome everybody here. So I wanted to just start by, um, I, I really like it that Alex introduced me as um, both the executive vice dean and also as a neuroscientist. And I think that one of the things that's really special to me about UCLA is there's not a real uh, division between administration and faculty. And I think the real the emphasis here is on the scholarship, the research, the education, and really the mission of the faculty that's shared with the administration. And I know that some of you took a tour this morning of the campus, but I wanted to situate you because we have a great advantage of being all located in a single footprint, walkable campus where there's great proximity and where the architecture really fosters interdisciplinary research. And I think that's really sort of an important ingredient for the success of BD2K efforts here at UCLA. And so if you look, here's an aerial view of the campus. Um, you can see uh, we're actually somewhere in the middle. Of the, ha the I think we're about, let's see, somewhere around right here in the faculty center. But all of the clinical activities and life sciences and physical sciences, engineering, are all located on the south part of the campus. We move into social sciences and up into arts and humanities. And again, it's always really beautiful here. This is kind of not the best weather, but it makes it very easy to be able to go back and forth between locations. And if we focus down on the south part of the campus, this is what I really want to emphasize is here are all the clinical activities, the hospital, the outpatient clinics. Here's this massive maze called the Center for Health Sciences where many of our labs are located. And then you walk just you know, two minutes across and you start getting into the life sciences, into what we call the court of sciences here where there's the California Nanosystems Institute, the Molecular Biology Institute, chemistry, up into physics and math and all of the engineering buildings. And even within these buildings, there's incredible synergy between the various disciplines and groups that are located. So, um, so this kind of architecture is really mirrored by um, a interdisciplinary uh, organization within the medical school. And not just within the medical school, but really across schools on campus. And I wanted to just tell you about two areas. One is in education, so about uh, three years ago, we reorganized our graduate program, so we joined forces with the College of Life Sciences and put together completely interdepartmental graduate programs in various what we call home areas, and the idea was that students would come in and they would, from the very beginning, both from the application, from interviewing, be exposed to the community of faculty who work within that area, whether it be neuroscience or bioinformatics or cell and molecular, cell and developmental biology. Um, and it is entirely interdepartmental, and I think the leadership, um, the, the curriculum brings together the faculty that makes sense for the students in those departments, and it's very much uh, the curriculum is tailored to what the students want to do. Uh, so that's something we've done in the graduate area. We also, uh, in the medical education arena, we've been very lucky because of the generosity of Dave and Geffen, who's given uh, what are called the Geffen Scholarships. And the Geffen Scholarships allow um, nearly a third of the medical school class to uh, attend medical school without any cost. So both tuition, tuition not only is tuition paid, but there's a stipend for these students so they can graduate without any debt and they're able to pursue their interests. And in addition to supporting the medical students, uh, three of these scholarships help support our MD-PhD program. So we now have a quite a large MD-PhD program. This year there are three, uh, 18 students who've uh, enrolled in the first year class, and many of these students are interested in uh, fields that really are uh, integral to the BD2K uh, mission. We also have an amazing program for residents who, uh, so for so house staff who are interested in fellows who are interested in research, who join a program called STAR, the Specialized Training in Academic Research. And those um, fellows, many of them actually go on to obtain a PhD in a lab. They work uh, as postdocs, and they really um, become important members of research teams that bring together the clinical mission with the research missions on campus. So the, the second area I wanted to talk about um, has to do with our reorganization in the field of genetics and genomics and bioinformatics. So we, uh, in the past, have had a human genetics department. It's actually a fairly new department, about, I think, 16 years old. 
uh, and we have a small biomath department that has excellence in mathematical modeling of biological processes. And as we looked at where the field is going in the last several years, we've decided to reorganize um, those departments. And the way that we're doing that is we're um, sort of building out the human genetics department. Uh, we're going to recall it the genetics and genomics um, department. We're working now on uh, negotiating with a candidate for chair. And our goal is really to, to build great strength in genetics and genomics. We're taking the, um, we have an ongoing search right now for a director, a, a chair for uh, what was the biomath department, what will become a biomedical informatics department, and this will have many tracks, including mathematical modeling, but also uh, various other aspects of computational biology and medicine. We, um, to sort of, the, what I see as sort of a third, a third leg of this table, we're negotiating now to appoint a director of what we're calling precision medicine, so somebody who's really going to um, bring together the uh, academic components of those two departments with the clinical enterprise. Um, so that's, I just wanted to give you a taste of these things. I think that there's a lot of change happening uh, in the medical school. It's, it's very much rooted in the research and clinical mission um, of our faculty and students. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to our um, Dean for Research, Judy Gaston, who's going to tell you about some other initiatives um, that are ongoing in campus trying to bring together different research components and areas. Thank you, Kelsey, and I'll just pick up where you left off. Uh, over the last three years in the School of Medicine, and also in collaboration with our colleagues across campus, we've undertaken a large effort to uh, enhance the ability to achieve team science groups of people and also to apply for team science grants from various funding agencies. We believe the way science has evolved, the future is all about working together and all about team science, and I think this BD2K a uh, project that we're talking about today is an example of some of the things that we've been able to do, which have included, but are not limited to recruiting new faculty, uh, graduate programs, and those types of things. But what I specifically wanted to highlight, if you look at this map that Kelsey put up, this is the, the Center for Health Sciences, and the hospital used to be right here. And the hospital moved across the street after the, earthquake, the Northridge earthquake, and it kind of freed up about a half a million square feet in the old hospital space. And so the School of Medicine decided to renovate that space and turn it into state-of-the-art research laboratories. And you might have imagined that they would assign that space to departments as is traditionally done in an academic environment. But the dean and the executive vice dean at that time said, no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna redesign this space and we're gonna bring together faculty into thematic areas from all across this South Campus to build teams that will be able to exceed what we're currently doing now. And that was a really exciting opportunity. So we put together a group of faculty and we looked at our clinical portfolios, our grant portfolios, and we said, what are the areas in which we are very strong now, but we could actually be much stronger if we built these teams? And it's really not just about the space. The space was a component of it but these thematic areas are much larger than just the floors that they will occupy in the South Tower. So the themes that we identified were neuroscience, regenerative medicine, cancer, immunology, infectious disease, and transplantation, cardiovascular, and metabolism. And we then put together a ground up, ground up, a from the ground up, not ground up like hamburger, <laughs> group of faculty members who represented really broad areas across the six themes that we had identified. And they worked for many, many months to come up with some really big scientific goals, much larger than any one of them could attack in their own research program. And we created these documents and we're going to use these documents as we go forward for fundraising. Philanthropy is a very important part of what we do but also to build these research teams and to strengthen them. And that was a really, really exciting process. And of course, Pepe and her group were an integral part of the cardiovascular group during that process. We then asked the faculty, what resources do you need to undertake these 
big scientific questions that you've come up with. And they generated a list of in infrastructure, shared resources, and those types of things. And so the dean's office took that list and looked across the themes and picked the ones that would facilitate the research across all of these themes, as well as our traditional departmental structures. And we're about ready this month to start investing several million dollars in these resources and shared resources, which include, among other things, additional bioinformatics support for faculty members who don't necessarily have state-of-the-art capabilities, proteomics, cell, cell sorting, them, some of those types of activities. So we're really very excited that we're coming to the end of this process. We'll be populating the space in about six months. We'll be pushing the science forward and funding the infrastructure needs of these faculty. So it's now my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Dr. Stephen Dubinet, who's a professor of medicine and is the principal investigator on our clinical and translational science initiative here at UCLA, who's done just a fabulous job, Steve. Thank you and welcome to um, UCLA. Uh, what, what is the Clinical Translational Science Institute at UCLA and, and how does it relate to, to some of your uh, interests? Um, the CTSI at UCLA has a, a very broad set of goals um, and uh, it, it begins really with, um, thank you. Um, it begins with um, our uh, mission, which is to bring uh, UCLA CTSI innovations to bear on the greatest health needs of Los Angeles and the nation. And that vision is to catalyze research that translates uh, discoveries into tangible improvements in healthcare disease prevention and, and the health of our community. Well, that's a very ambitious uh, plan. And every year uh, when we meet with our external advisory board, uh, they ask us, how can we meet that ambition? One of the major ways in which we're uh, building uh, toward that uh, is in innovations in, bio in biomedical informatics. Um, importantly, we've established uh, infrastructure resources um, and are helping to build the workforce to use those resources. Um, first, by establishing a federated clinical data warehouse for cohort identification for patient accrual that I'll describe to you both across the state with the University of California, um, and secondly, by uh, building what we call Ladder, which is LA Data Resource, uh, which is a federation of clinical data warehouses across the Los Angeles region. Um, second, uh, we're building uh, uh, in collaboration with Alex Bowie, for example, uh, and Doug Bell, uh, a clinical informatics fellowship uh, that begins uh, uh, this year uh, and a graduate level biomedical informatics training program for clinicians uh, as well. And as um, Dr. Martin told you, uh, we're uh, building a new department that is really focused uh, as being the academic home uh, for those who have uh, academic interest in biomedical informatics. Well, we're doing this um, because of something you know well, and, and this is really adapted from a paper from a couple of years ago from Bill Stead, um, and that is as we approach both clinical problems, clinical research, translational investigation, and basic science, we're confronted uh, with this opportunity and, and this dilemma. Um, and that is that uh, each of us can cognitively deal with five to six uh, or so facts per decision, uh, but we're faced with this enormity uh, of, of work in, in genetics and proteomics and other large data sets. But I took the liberty of actually adding something to Dr. Stead's uh, graph, uh, and that was the burgeoning opportunity for the biggest large data set imaginable. It's temporal. Uh, it's changing every day. It includes not just our clinical data that we have in the healthcare setting, uh, but also the activities of daily living. So we're really building the infrastructure uh, to capture this uh, and the expertise to utilize that data constructively. Um, so uh, Kelsey mentioned um, our infrastructure and plans for an academic home for precision medicine. And so we're doing this quite well uh, in terms of following individual patients over time in our EMR, um, but really what we're working toward uh, is to have the ability to make predictions on large data sets, both clinical data uh, and omic data, so that we can make population-based uh, predictions. In order to do that, we've begun um, 
to create infrastructure, not just alone for our UCLA investigators and health system here, but across the University of California by federating our clinical data warehouse with others and creating through what we call UC Braid, this consortium amongst the UCs, all of the things around this we would need to actually make sense of that data. And that is to include all of the master contracting RRB harmonization, harmonizing biobankings that will be important in that endeavor. Today, I've just learned that this number now of patients is approaching 15 million. In addition to this, in Los Angeles, we're teaming together with USC and many of our partner health systems to create Los Angeles Data Resource, which will be an additional system in which we can have a cohort finding across the identified patient sources. Ultimately, we plan to utilize this by bringing a point of care research and using data in a constructive manner in clinical investigation. So welcome to UCLA. We're thrilled to have Pepe's group with us. And we invite you to share with us in these new developments. Thank you. Thanks for all of you for coming. Truly appreciate it. Everyone is insanely busy, but you're here. Thanks for all your support to join this uh, very broad and exciting data science uh, community at UCLA. I think today is a special day. It calls for a celebration of wonderful achievement by our community. Four BD2K awards to UCLA in the last year, the very first year. Amazing accomplishment, starting from um, Mattel's T32 in collaboration with Dr. Alex Bui and Dr. Alex Hoffman. And this is one of the two T32s in the country, an amazing program effort uh, to build uh, the big education umbrella studies at UCLA. And then for those of you who are not aware, we also have a very special innovative education online training award to Professor Chris Lee. Uh, he's been the leader and the pioneering in creating bioinformatics programs on campus. And he created this unique program and it's been part of the BD2K education family. And also the two awards, uh, one of which PI'd uh, by Carol Watson in cardiology. Uh, she's a population cardiologist in collaboration with Professor Andrew Su from TSRI, Professor Mary Lindsay from UMMC at Jackson, Mississippi, and uh, Hanningham Jacob, who's the cluster head at EMBO uh, EBI and myself, a center of excellence award. Now we're going into year two, and this is part of the side visit and the progress reports, as well as the most recent event. Um, for those of you who know us, we've worked with many of you closely together uh, with uh, Professor Alex Bui, Professor Wei Wang, and myself for the Coordination Center Award uh, for the BD2K program uh, at uh, NIH. Um, as both Dr. Judy Gasson and uh, Dr. Uh, Kelsey Martin have stated earlier today, that we have the advantage of being on the same campus with both the engineering school and the medical school. So our faculty members have worked side by side very closely in building these programs as well as many other programs that are currently in process. With these unique collaborations, it placed UCLA in a strong leadership for data science, uh, both in the nation and globally. As emphasized just by Steve, that one of our key elements is medical informatics. 
and you could appreciate from the 14 programs or the 13 programs Alex Bui and I listed on this sign, all these programs at UCLA are collaborating very closely, including the computational human genetic programs and epigenetics by Eliazar Astin and Jason Ernest the informatics program at the Cancer Center where Arash is going to give a keynote talk later, and the biomass program represented by David Alishoff and others, and the bioinformatics graduate training program, Chris Lee's R25 program, as well as a number of computer science program uh, supported by other agencies such as NSF. We've been honored and excited to work with this large community that offers amazing breadth and depth of data science and that cultivated the progress and accomplishments of year one for the Center of Excellence of BD2K program, as well as just the short few months studies uh, that uh, we've started on the coordination uh, center elements. In the next two days, we will be hosting 31 poster presentations, 15 oral presentations to highlight the progress and accomplishments of these two centers, six of which will be from the BD2K Coordination Center, including a prototype pre-alpha of a one new resource directory that's been led by Professor Wei Wang, a number of planning stage on NIH BD2K working groups that's led by Professor Alex Bui, and the hackathons in the consortium wide, including 11 Center of Excellence, BioCaddy links, as well as all relevant BD2K programs and communities outside of BD2K, led by Professor Andrew Su. Importantly, among the 23 presentations from the Center of Excellence, none of which would address clinical relevant population data sets and questions of applying biocomputational tools, will be highlighting 11 new tools created, number of them came from Professor Yates' laboratory at TSRI, a number of them from other groups as well. Four new data analysis pipelines, not just a single tool, but linking tools together, building a platform for investigators, three crowdsourcing initiatives, and one clinical training initiatives. As well as tomorrow morning, there will be two webinars where there are demos by both Hanning on his omics uh, DDI, as well as Professor Wei Wang on her uh, resource directory BD2K called Aztec. Today, we're also hosting a panel discussion where uh, Professor Carol Watson, uh, Ali Azar, and David Ashlap, as well as Zhang Tsai, most of them are our physician scientists are going to discussing challenging questions of creating computational tools, moving it into clinical settings, and supporting clinical informatics forward. One more thing to mention before I close my three minutes talk. Uh, that is the collaborations that we're proposing, not just within the BD2K community at UCLA and the data science community in Southern California, but to say we've been successfully established project-specific collaborations with Mark Musen Center, Seder at Stanford, with uh, Professor Lucia uh, Ana Machado for her Baucati studies, and uh, hopefully a uh, supplement, actually funding is coming to support additional activities with Valcadi, as well with uh, Jiawei Han Center at uh, Chicago, the Knowing Center, where he's created a number of effective tools for text mining that's helping us capturing metadata, info box, 
uh, for the BD2K uh, resource directory. And George Cooper's uh, center at Pittsburgh has been collaborating with us, cross analyzing some genomic data using his platform and our platforms in parallel, as well as following NIH uh, recommendation and advice, we are establishing collaborations with a Euro Europe uh, program called uh, Alexa Hand uh, by Nicholas Bloomberg. With all that said, I'd like to again welcome uh, Dr. Susan Greggett from BD2K and IGMS, and Dr. Ian Four from BD2K and NCI, and uh, Dr. Ishua Shandramali uh, from NCI BD2K as well. Uh, thanks to all of you joining us. Thank you.